to try something different this week. I'm going to try and do a video essay. Uh, it's a uh, model that I'm trying to encourage my students to use, so I thought I would give it a try as I do my reading synthesis summary for lessons four and five. Um, so for the past two weeks, we've read uh, five different articles. We began with Mar Marcy Driscoll's chapter on constructivism, where she provided a summary of the history of constructivism and uh, Jean Piaget's uh, learning theory. We also read Yasmin Kafai's uh, constructivism, sorry, constructionism, uh, which examined uh, the constructionist view uh, that was based, based upon Seymour Papert's work using logo, which did derive from uh, Piaget's work. And we looked at John Seeley Brown and his uh, paper, Situated Cognition and the Culture of Learning, and examined the idea that learning is facilitated best when it's done in a context that has meaning for the learner. We read Jean Lege, uh, uh, Jean Levet's and Etienne Wegner's work, um, Legitimate Peripheral Participation, which described the concept of situated learners in communities of practice. And finally, Barbara Rogoff, Development as Transformation of Participation in Cultural Activities, where she examined uh, some of the uh, why researchers missed some of the connections between culture uh, and uh, the learner. Now, I found, I found the works of LeVay and Wegner and Brown uh, to be the most interesting because of the dynamic in which the, their works linked together, but it was definitely augmented with the papers of um, the others, uh, other authors. Um, so beginning with LeVay and Wegner, one of the things that they focused on was this idea that a person's intentions to learn are engaged through meaning of learning and is configured through the process of becoming a full participant in social cultural practice. Um, the, what they meant by that or what they came to define that as is a legitimate peripheral participation. And legitimate peripheral participation was what they uh, described as the process of becoming a member of or a participant in a social group or a community centered around a common interest. And uh, for example, uh, there could be a group of people who come together to learn how to do photography. New members are not very good at photography or lack many of the nuanced skills that make a photographer good. And, while, uh, and in that community there would be more seasoned or older members who do possess that knowledge. And through interactions between the members of the community, the beginners would start to construct their new knowledge, their new understanding, and their new skill sets and improve as a photographer. Now, here with this example of photography, we can see how self-motivated learning works. The hobbyist photographer possesses LaVey's intentions to learn. Now, this drew for me a question. I said, can a person's intention to, be, to learn be as engaged when they're a young child in the same way that an older, more self-directed learner can be. Uh, I felt that if we took LeVay's argument to its logical conclusion, I found my ask, myself asking, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Is the uh, intention to learn going to motivate the learner? Uh, and if they're, or if they're too young, do they possess the ability to have an intention to learn? Now, Driscoll, giving us a history of the work of Jean Paget, Piaget uh, and the uh, constructivism view of learning, answers this question somewhat. For Piaget and constructivism, this intention to learn is activated when a learner is engaged in the construction of their learning through purposeful engagement. Uh, this activation of intention might need to be modified by an adult or an expert, as was described previously, um, if this activation was to occur between a learner and an expert, this would be similar to Lev Vygotsky's 
zone of proximal development in which a uh, beginning learner is presented with a complex idea or a set of skills that's beyond their ability, yet they're guided through the process of learning them or navigating them to the point um, uh, by an expert. Um, now this, this works with uh, Piaget's uh, idea of the learner engaging in the construction of their own knowledge, but they're provided some guidance. Um, through a sense of community or through a, another community member or a teacher. Now Driscoll points out that from a constructivist perspective, learners are organisms seeking meaning. Now this organism seeking meaning connects with LaVey's point of the sort of the intention to learn. Um, and this is uh, something I found interesting that they all circled around on each other. Now, Jean uh, LaVey argues that learning normally occurs when it is embedded in a situation uh, or in an, in an activity that is part of a context and a culture. By having the act of learning embedded in the context and culture, the learner is able to avoid uh, John Seeley Brown's cautionary warning that uh, too many teachers or teaching practices uh, fall into which is that they assume conceptual knowledge can be abstracted from situations in which it's learned and to be used. So Brown uh, made the argument and made the case that uh, when teachers are teaching ideas that they have so disconnected it from the uh, world in which it's used that it's difficult for the learners to begin to understand this concept. We'll see this uh, a little bit later on when we talk about um, an example that uh, LeVay uh, discussed with a uh, grade 4 math teacher. Now, Brown wants us to, to abandon the idea that concepts are abstract, self-contained entities that can be taught in a classroom. Um, that these concepts uh, can only exist when they have a context and that if we abstract them too much, they become meaningless or too complex, too difficult to understand. Um, Brown posits that cognitive apprenticeships is a model that could be followed that would allow this uh, learning to, do, uh, to occur where there's not the abstraction. Uh, cognitive apprenticeships is where a learner acquires or develops and uses cognitive tools in an authentic domain-based activity. Now this concept has some similarities to traditional apprenticeship models um, that uh, you know, enculturate a student in authentic practices through activity and social interaction, but the focus of these are more on cognitive, cognitive and metacognitive skills as opposed to trade skills that might be learned in a traditional apprenticeship model, uh, such as uh, you know, forging metal or horseshoes um, to, to use a, a, a classic apprenticeship idea. The, the cognitive apprenticeship is one where uh, is much more um, uh, advanced forms of learning would go on. Now all of the authors, uh, their ideas centered around that knowledge is only achievable or the construction of knowledge uh, and learning is only achievable through active engagement, that they are inseparable from each other. And you have Brown, LeVay, Wegner, Rogoff, all agree that authentic learning can only occur in the, uh, when the context of learning is part of the education process. Now, Brown makes the statement, it's a fairly long, lengthy statement, he says it on uh, page 41 of his, his book, um, whatever the domain, Explication often lifts implicit and possibly non, even non-conceptual constraints out of the embedded world and tries to make them explicit or conceptual. Now, these now take place in our ontology and become something more to learn rather than simply something useful in learning. But indexically, representations gain their efficiency by leaving much of the context underrepresented or implicit. So Brown thinks that the problem, this problem, 
can be solved through education practices that make uh, a convincing account of the relationship between explicit knowledge and implicit understanding. Which, for me, I struggled with a bit because it seemed to me that any good teacher would make that happen, even if they weren't necessarily following a situated learning uh, uh, education model. That um, if you, as a teacher, can build a relationship between explicit knowledge and implicit understanding, uh, that, that that's just good teaching purposes. Um, this is one that I, I don't have the answer to. But Brown states that education has focused on century, for centuries on making conceptual or cognitive representations of knowledge the most important task. And he argues that um, activity and perception are important, importantly and epistemologically prior to conceptual, uh, conceptualization, and it is on them that more attention needs to be focused activity and perception uh, are important. Um, this, uh, this harkens back to my, my you know, question about which comes first, um, but uh, I, I don't have the answer to that. Um, you know, did, did, can you have a, a, a young child that has the ability to be actively in engaged in their learning, or do they need to just be shown how to do stuff without a full understanding of what it is they're being shown? And to me, if we're showing a young child something that they don't fully understand, but through repeated practice guides them to understanding, uh, that to me seems like a level of, 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 of abstraction um, that Brown is trying to argue against. Um, now, Brown, in trying to uh, work through this, uh, gives the example of uh, a fourth grade math teacher, Lampert, who was working with uh, algorithms, trying to teach the children algorithms, which is a difficult task to do. Um, algorithms are fairly abstract. Now, to manage this difficulty, Lampert helped the students move towards understanding by beginning with coin problems and stories the community had created. So her argument for doing was this, doing this, is that it made the difficult concepts, algorithms, easier to understand because the algorithm is presented in a context, uh, a community problem that the children understood. Now, Lampert's work is an example of trying to break the flawed practice Brown thinks education has fallen into that of trying to abstract, contra, extra, abstract conceptual knowledge from the situation which is learned or used. And this is precisely what LeVay and Wegner um, are uh, saying needs to happen, that you have to take the learning back into the community uh, or the situation or the context in which um, uh, the, uh, the idea that you're trying to teach comes from, that you must take the children or take the concept back to the context that the learner comes from. Um, I mean, abstract thinking is a way of thinking about things uh, that are removed from the facts of the here and now um, and from specific examples uh, or concepts being thought about. Um, and this is, all the authors are really working against this abstraction. They're trying to solidify the, the knowledge that the children are gaining or the learner is gaining. Um, either Be that either through uh, active engagement, as Piaget uh, said and Driscoll uh, summarized, or through the use of the logo program that Pepper did in his constructionism. Um, so all the authors are pushing forth this idea that for us to have meaningful learning going on, it has to be done in a context that relates to the, the, the learner's situation. I hope this summarizes the work of this two weeks and a meaningful
meaningful way. And uh, thank you for listening.